um, near the cross, man. Uh, we're going to be looking at discipleship this morning. We, we've been looking at just some really basic Christian things. We looked at the Bible and God and faith and salvation and sin. And, um, discipleship is a really basic truth of the Christian life. Uh, we'll start in, in Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, when Jesus makes a, a statement that I want us to, uh, to look at this morning. Luke 9, verse 23. We were singing, draw me nearer, and, and I noticed the phrase, and my will be lost in thine. Uh, that's, that's pretty much discipleship. Uh, my will be lost in thine. Well, here's Luke 9, verse 23. Uh, he said to them all, this is Jesus, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. I just stop reading, reading there. Uh, he talks here about discipleship, following the Lord. And a very simple and straightforward statement he makes, particularly in verse 23 there. If you're going to come after the Lord, if you're going to follow the Lord, he says, uh, it, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And uh, he, he talks there about taking up your cross. Uh, this has been distorted to where people say, oh, uh, you know, I've, I've had this terrible thing happen. I've got my cross to bear. Listen, that's not your cross. <laughs> the cross is not the troubles that, that you face. The cross is the cross of Calvary. Uh, it's his cross. And it's dying to self. It's, it's living for Jesus. Uh, he gives us his cross. He gives us his life, uh, his ministry. And I want to encourage you, you know, we do have tribulation, we do have trouble, but that's not the cross he's talking about taking up because he says later in Galatians that we're to glory in the cross, glory not save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, coming to Jesus is free. That's called salvation. That makes us a believer. That's free. Coming after Jesus is a different story. That makes us a disciple. There is a cost. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Man, the world will tell you, promote self. You're number one. <laughs> Follow your heart. Uh, just about everything God says, the world will tell you the opposite. And Jesus gives you the opportunity to follow him. He doesn't say it will be easy, but he says it will be glory. Uh, let me encourage you this morning as we think about discipleship to consider it in relationship to your own life. Uh, my subtitle this morning is The Christian's Attitude. It's not just that, but being a disciple is kind of a, just an attitude toward life. You know, my will be lost in His. What does the Lord want me to do? And, uh, you know, as Christians this morning, we need to understand about uh, discipleship. Discipleship has a process. Uh, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and, a, and, and an end. It starts with salvation. You must be born again, Jesus said. Um, and that's what gives us spiritual life. There's a lot of religion in the world. You know, Satan's in the religion business. He loves religion, as long as you don't believe in Jesus, <laughs> as long as you don't trust the Christ of the Bible. Uh, and the reason many people don't grow is because there's no life. You know, they're professing Christians, they're religious people, but they've never been born again. Uh, we were visiting my... My mother-in-law, it's been some time ago, and her sister lived nearby and was going to be away, and so I was appointed to go and water the plants. Well, there was this one plant I kept watering. I didn't realize it was a fake plant. <laughs> it didn't matter how much I watered it, it wouldn't grow. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, coming to church, doing Christian things won't make you grow until first you have life. The process of discipleship has to have a beginning. There has to be life salvation. And then it should naturally follow that you grow. 
Uh, in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, you, you probably uh, know the verse uh, where he says, But as, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. You know, that's a normal thing. When you think of it in relation to human babies, you know, just physical babies, man, they, you don't have to tell them, oh, you should be hungry now. <laughs> they tell you, I'm hungry now. <laughs> over and over they'll tell you until you, you satisfy them. Uh, you know, as, as Christians, uh, we should have an appetite. And we should, uh, as babes in, in Christ, when we first get saved, we're going to want uh, to grow. Turn, if you would, with me to Hebrews chapter 6. We're mainly going to be looking in the book of Hebrews this morning. When you first get saved, you're a, you're a babe in Christ, but just like a, a, a physical baby, you should go on from that. You shouldn't stay a baby uh, all of your, your Christian life. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, he says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. I'll read the rest of it in a moment. He says, we need to go on. And that word perfection means to maturity or completion. You need to keep growing. Don't just stay where you are. Keep going. And our goal, of course, is to be like Jesus. And he lists some of the basic beginning things. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works or of faith toward God. The doctrine of baptisms or of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. This will we do if God permit. Yeah, there's some things that when you first get saved, you, you learn uh, you know, about faith and you, you learn about some of the, the basic things. If you've been saved 20, 30 years, you shouldn't have to keep learning that same thing. Now, you learn more about it, and you learn more in depth, and, and, and so on. Uh, but he says, uh, we need to go on uh, to maturity. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a race. You've got to start. You've got to be on the, on the starting line. You've got to start, and then you've got to keep, keep going. God wants us to grow. If you go back to Hebrews 5, verse 12, he says, For, when, for the time you ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See, God... God doesn't condemn us for being babes when we're babes. But he says, then you need to go on. Uh, you need to grow. You need to become skillful in the word of righteousness, he says there in verse 13. Um, and the reason we don't grow is, he uses the word there in verse 14, by reason of use. If we're going to grow, it's going to be by reason of use. And God is going to teach us. We need to accept responsibility. As Christians, we need to be disciples. That needs to be not only our attitude, but our label. You know, if people say, people say who, who are you? I'm a disciple of Christ. Now, be careful. There's a, probably a denomination called that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the scriptural truth. Yeah, there's some real basic things we need to do. Um, there's a, a diagram that someone has made for many years called the Disciples' Cross. And, and the center is abiding in Christ. We need to abide in Christ. We need to be in Christ. And then the, uh, the horizontal uh, uh, parts of the cross have to do with our relationship to people. We need to relate to Christians and to the lost. We need to be a part of a church. We need to be witnessing. Uh, you know, it's real, those, that's real basic. Uh, then the, the vertical lines have to do with talking to the Lord and the Lord talking to us. Man, those are five really basic things. And in doing that, then we'll go on to other truths. And other things, and, and more and more, God will use that to help us to be like Jesus. It's interesting, discipleship is included in the Great Commission. You probably know, at least partly, uh, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, when uh, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And that word teach means disciple. And he goes on, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Discipleship's in the Great Commission. Teaching them. Now, for us to teach, we have to be taught. You know, for us to disciple, we have to be disciples. 
And he doesn't just say teaching them, teaching them to observe. That has to do with obedience. We need to be obedient uh, to the Lord, uh, teaching them to observe all things. And we've got a lifetime for it. Uh, to be a disciple, there has to be a start. Salvation, a babe in Christ, a growing, and then maturing. As we saw there in, in uh, Hebrews 6, verse 1, let us go on unto perfection. Now, I say this regularly, but that, that's not talking about being without flaw. It's talking about being complete. We need to keep growing in the Lord. Um, keep uh, looking to Jesus. Perfection. Uh, there's a process. And, and in this process, in this progression, let me ask you, where are you? Have you started? Have you been born again? Has, has there been a time when you've trusted Christ as your Savior? Uh, are you a babe? You know, are, uh, when people talk about things of, of Christ, you think, oh, I better ask the pastor what that means. <laughs> and it's okay to ask the pastor, ask someone. But listen, at some point, you need to start understanding things. Uh, you need to start wearing out your Bible, writing things in there, and, uh, you know, uh, grow in, in the Lord. There needs to be a progression. Let me encourage you. Make sure you've started and as you've started, go on and uh, let the Lord uh, bring, to you, bring you to more maturity than, than what you are today. This process of discipleship is based on the disciple's position, uh, the foundation that we have. Let me give you uh, three things from Hebrews chapter 10. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. He says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By the which will. If you go back to verse 7, he, he says, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Discipleship is built, for one, on the will of God. Disciples are looking for the will of God. Jesus was looking for the will of God. He was, he was serving the will of God. He came to do uh, the Father's will. And God's will has to do with salvation, one, at least one thing. There's, you know, there's things in the scope of eternity that we're not going to know. There's a verse that says, the secret things belong unto the Lord. If God doesn't reveal it, don't worry about it. <laughs> but what he reveals, we need to know. And God wants to know us. Uh, the, the will of God is part of our foundation as disciples. We can, uh, we can search the scriptures. We can see uh, God's will. Uh, in 2 Peter 3, 9, he says, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I believe it's God's will that people be saved. We need to, to see that. In 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that we live holy lives, be set apart. Uh, we rest on the will of God. It's not my will or your will. It's not me saying, no, you should do this. No, we need to find out, thus saith the Lord, the will of God. The second thing is, in the same verse, is the work of Christ. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. He repeats that, that thought in verse 12. This man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Again in verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Uh, listen, we have a foundation in Jesus Christ uh, that as disciples... Uh, we, we don't have to, to worry about what Christ has done. The will of God, uh, the work of Christ. Listen, your discipleship is not based on your works. It's based on his works. In Titus, he says, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Uh, you know, in another place, he says, we love him because he first loved us. He says, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's the foundation, is the work of Christ, the will of God. And then in Hebrews 10, verse 15, the witness of the Holy Spirit. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. You know, when, you re when you get saved, God says the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you. That's part of our, our foundation as disciples. God will help us. God, uh, as we've read already, said he'll, he'll never leave us or forsake us. And what a blessing it is uh, that we can uh, seek out and, and commit ourselves to the will of God and the work of Christ and that we can be guided by the witness of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God uses the Word of God to mold the child of God. And that's what, it, what discipleship is. Uh, the will of God, the work of Christ, the witness of the Holy Spirit. 
And that brings us to a very practical side of, of discipleship. You know, discipleship is more than just an attitude. It's also what we do. You know, there has to be something involved. And look at Hebrews chapter 13. There's probably other passages we could, uh, we could look at. Discipleship, if we're going to be seeking the will of God, well, there's a whole book, you know, we can, we can look at. But Hebrews chapter 13, we'll look at several here. The disciples' work. You know, besides just what we talked about, the disciples' cross. You know, our church and our witness, our Bible and praying and abiding in Christ. Uh, Hebrews 13, verse 1, here's another one. Let brotherly love continue. You realize that's part of discipleship, is working with other disciples? You, know, you read the Gospels and you get into Acts. Sometimes it was hard working with other disciples. You know, sometimes they'd, they'd have a disagreement or whatever. Uh, but God calls us to brotherly love. Uh, it, you know, being a disciple is both a privilege and a responsibility. Uh, there's people who need you. Uh, you need others. We're not the lone ranger in this thing of, of serving the Lord. We have a responsibility. Let brotherly love continue. Verse 2, he says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Uh, that's a weird verse, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, but he's talking there particularly, specifically about hospitality. You know, we live in a, a country where um, home ownership is you know, considered very important and you know, where we live and so on. Uh, let me encourage you to believe this, this verse and use hospitality. Use your home for the Lord. It's not just inve an investment. It's not just a place to stay. Uh, some people have learned this in countries where war comes. Man, a home that you can, you, you can invest a whole lifetime in a home. And you know, it's like we, uh, we read in, in Luke 9, what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul or be cast away? Uh, we need to show hospitality. Use the physical things God gives you for the Lord. Verse 3, remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Uh, we need to have sympathy towards suffering Christians. Uh, we need to have uh, compassion. Uh, it could happen to you. It could happen to me. And uh, we would want the, the compassion of others around us. Remember them that are in bonds as, as bound with them. In verse 4, he says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. As disciples, we need to practice purity. Uh, you know, God is the one who gave marriage. You know, the world keeps trying to change things and all kinds of strange things going on. But as Christians, we need to commit ourselves to the will of God. In uh, 1 Thessalonians, he puts it this way, God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. It's in our home, in our family, and uh, in our life. Uh, as disciples, we need to live pure lives. Verse 5, the beginning, he says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. As disciples, we need to be content. Uh, you know, it's not right for us to always be unhappy with what God has done for us. Um, that we had a, a teacher in Bible college who used to say that uh, you know, a lot of people's attitude is, poor me, all I have is God. <laughs> in uh, 1 uh, Timothy, he says, godliness with contentment is great gain. As disciples, God wants us to be content. There was times when God sent out his disciples and said, take nothing with you. There was other times he sent them out and said, take things with you. You know, we need to be content with what, what, the, what the Lord is, is doing uh, in our life. And then at the end of that verse, he says, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We need to have confidence in the Lord. As you're living your Christian life, your confidence is not in you. Yeah, just about anything in the world, there's probably somebody that could do it better than you. That doesn't mean you don't have a go. I, I know there's guys who preach a lot better than me. There's even a guy with the same name as me, Bill Bramblett. He's a lot better preacher than me, but he's not here. You get Bill Bramblett number two, all right? Uh, you, you, know, you just can't look at life thinking, oh, well, you yeah. No, just do what God would, would have you to do. Be, be confident in the Lord and let Him use you. I, I say it all the time, but I, I just always figure, well, if, 
If God could use a stick in Moses' hand, God can use me and God can use you. Amen. Then in, in verse 7, he says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Cooperation. Now, we need to have cooperation. It's similar to the uh, verse 1 where he talks about brother, brotherly love. He says, remember. That means be mindful of. Yeah, I'm your pastor. Uh, you'll have different Christian leaders in your life. Their life should be better because of your walk with the Lord, because of your discipleship. And your life should be better because of their walk with the Lord. Be mindful of them. Uh, that would involve praying for them, learning from them. I was thinking about it this week. I guess we could learn both positive and negative. Some, some Christian leaders, you, you, you see what, the way they went, you, you consider the end of their conversation, you think, I'm not going that way. <laughs> Others, you see, yeah, I wanna, I, I'd love to be like that. I'd love to have a testimony and a, and a, and a work like that. Uh, but we need to, to be cooperative. Uh, be a blessing. John wrote about people that he'd, he'd been around, Christians that he'd been around, and he said, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we received a commandment from the Father. Uh, that's 2 John uh, verse 4. Yeah, we need to be a blessing to others. Verse 8 is a very well-known verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Listen, the faith doesn't change. You don't need a new doctrine. You don't need a new way. You don't need a, a new thing. Um, we need to be, uh, have stability in our Christian life. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Don't put things and ideas first. Put the Lord first. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We don't need to be carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. It happens, doesn't it? Oh, man, it's new. A new idea. Well, uh, don't worry about that. Verse 12, he says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. That word without just means outside. Outside the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We need to identify with Christ. If you're a disciple... If you've been saved, God calls you to be a disciple. You need to identify with Christ. You know, the world calls us Christians, maybe, you know, if they're being nice to us. God calls us to be disciples. Take up your cross and follow me. In verse 14, he's basically saying, don't love the world. Here, here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Listen, no matter how good you have it, whatever city you're in, we were talking the other day. Where would we live if we could just go anywhere we wanted and, you know, not, not a ministry, not family, not, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't think of one, but, uh, you, you know, there's people who they just think, oh, I always, I'd love to live here, I'd love to go there. L listen, no matter where you go, you're going to go with you. <laughs> and there's going to be people there that are going to have trouble with you. And uh, you're going to get sick there. And, you know, things happen no matter where we go, except when we get to heaven. Uh, we need to be uh, careful that we're not loving the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Verse 15, he says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, don't be a... What's that saying? Something guts. Uh, yeah. Don't be a grumble guts. Yeah? Don't, don't be a miserable person. Um, look for the good and for the glory of God. No matter what happens, God says in everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. If we're going to be disciples, if my will is going to be lost in His, well, wherever He leads, we need to follow. Wherever He leads, I'll go. Uh, we need to praise the Lord. And then verse 16, he says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And can you see how you can take just about any scripture and you can see, well, what is a disciple to do? Here's a whole bunch of things. 
uh, to do good. And God wants us to do good. He wants us to demonstrate God's love. Sunday school, we were talking about mercy. Yeah, we need to be merciful people. Uh, and he talks there about communicating. Uh, it has to do with giving. Uh, the word is actually coined in he. has to do with our, our fellowship. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we need to do good and we need to give. Verse 17, here's a, something for us as disciples. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that's unprofitable for you. you know, as your pastor, I, someday I'm going to give an account for my pastoral work. And I'm going to give an account for you. And it, it's no benefit to you if you say, oh, well, the pastor didn't lead me right. Uh, you know, as, as Christians, we need to be in submission. And to be in submission, to submit yourselves, it means you need to be a part of something. You know, as Christians, uh, you know, I said earlier, I don't know if people nowadays understand the term, you're not the lone ranger. You're not the only person. Life is not just about us. As Christians, we're a part of something bigger. And uh, we're to be a part of a church. And, and Christianity is even bigger than that. You know, it's not just one church. It's a lot of churches. And someday we're all going to bond together in, in heaven. But, you know, God has given us something bigger than just us and just our family. Now, you're important as an individual. Your family's important. Your church is important. Eternity is important. Uh, and he says here that we need to be in submission to them that have the rule over us. Now, this is talking particularly about a church situation. As Christians, there are times when as your pastor, I'm going to ask or tell you to do something. I was talking to my wife the other day. I'm a pretty mild-mannered pastor. I don't ask people to do a whole lot. But when I ask you to do something, really, unless there's some pretty good reason, you should do it. I don't mean jump off a cliff. <laughs> but you know what? If I asked you to jump off a cliff, there probably would be a good reason, to be honest with you. I see people in the world jump off cliffs every once in a while. It's usually because there's a herd of wild buffalo behind them or something. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get, get uh, off the subject there. But we need to see that there's something bigger than us. And uh, as Christians, we have a responsibility uh, to each other. Jesus calls us to discipleship. Uh, it should be our attitude. I, I want to follow the Lord. It, it should be our identity. I'm, that's who I am. I'm a disciple. It should also, also be our action. Doing the things of of a disciple, a follower of Christ. Uh, Jesus gave what I think makes a, a good picture of this in Mark 4.28. Uh, I'm just applying this. Mark 4.28 is where he says, The earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. He's just using a word picture. We've probably all seen something grow. You know, where you put a seed in and, boy, then it's amazing. You know, boom, that thing comes out and, depending upon what it is, you know, the branches and the flowers and the fruit and, and so on. That's what discipleship is like. There's a growth, but it starts with life. There's got to be life. And, and, and that's, that's the question I would ask you this morning. Is there life? <laughs> Are you in Christ? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Uh, we sing a chorus, Does the Spirit dwell within, bearing witness that you've been cleansed from every sin and stain? Is the Holy Spirit there? See, when you get saved, the Bible says you receive the Holy Spirit. We only believe in one God. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But when you receive the Lord, He comes into your heart. He comes into your life, and He says He'll never leave you or forsake you. He's the living God. Uh, are you in Christ? If you died today, do you know, based on Scripture, that you're, you're born again? Well, secondly, are you a disciple? If you're saved, don't stay a baby. And we love babies, you know. Uh, we had babies, but uh, they're not babies anymore. <laughs> our babies have babies, and it won't be long our babies' babies will have babies. <laughs> you know, uh, life goes on. That's the way it should be. Grow. Uh, be a learner. Be a doer. Be faithful. Do something hard. You know, do something hard for the Lord. Uh, be a disciple. There is a price. Paul made the statement, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's a blessing to, to know the Lord. There was a song I, my mother used to sing, uh, Not what I wish to be, nor where I wish to go, for who am I that I should choose my way? The Lord shall choose for me. Tis better far I know that He would bid me go or stay. 
Listen, that's discipleship. It'll, it'll cost us in that he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. We've got to quit trusting ourselves. We've got to quit trying to please ourselves and follow him. It'll also cost us in that we won't be happy living in sin. Romans 6, he says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. As Christians, uh, we're not going to be happy living in the world anymore. We're not going to be happy just uh, living for self anymore. We're going to want to follow Christ. Let me encourage you this morning. Jesus' call is follow me. Like we read, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Will you do that? Let's go to him in prayer this, this morning. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we don't understand everything that you say and do. and Yet, Lord, the basics are so simple, and we thank you for that, for the simplicity of salvation and uh, Lord, just for this uh, truth this morning that you're God, you're the leader, and we can follow you. Lord, I pray that you would help us. Father, if there are any here this morning that are not saved, help them to see that eternity is, is not worth risking. Father, help them to trust you. Lord, for saved people, help us to live for you. Help us to make time for you. Help us to honor you. Lord, help us to be the disciples that we should be and that we would reach others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing the song, uh, page 350 in the book, if you're using that, Where He Leads Me, page 350. So as we sing, maybe you need to come and pray, or if, if, you're not, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I'd be happy to have someone show you from the Bible how to be saved. I'll, I'll just be at the back there. and If you'd like to, uh, someone to show you how to be saved, just, just come back and we'll... We'll have someone do that, but... Uh...